I've seen a picture of you in a nice basketball jersey with your squad. It was a different style of basketball. Well, we are back. Thank you, Dr. Fauci, for taking time out of your busy schedule to uh, have another conversation. I really enjoyed the first one on, on IG, and, you know, reality was a little different. Back in uh, March, you know, early April, where we were still figuring out a lot about what the pandemic meant, and wanted to get a, a, an update, obviously, in terms of where your perspective is and what we need to be focused on and, and doing as a collective going forward. So I appreciate the time. Appreciate you sitting down. Good to be with you. Absolutely. I've seen a picture of you in a nice basketball jersey with your, with your squad, and I think there's a, a nice reputation of what your basketball prowess was back in the day, even to the point of being, uh, hearing the nickname America's Point Guard uh, by no less than Coach K. You know, Steph, it was a different style of basketball because it was a long time ago. When, when I tell you how long ago it was, you're going to look at me and say, my God, you're still, you're still able to speak and stand. I know being a part of obviously basketball and team sports for me has taught me a lot about myself and life. That is my world. But for you, I wanted, I was interested to know if sports taught you anything about yourself and life that you've carried with you into your professional career. It has played a major influence, uh, Steph, no doubt in so many ways. I mean, everything from the fact that as good as you might be or think you are, the fact is you're part of a team. If you can shine, but you don't get a good result and win the game, it's almost like, you know, being a hotshot investigator, but you never do anything that's really worthwhile because you don't do it in a collaborative way. So, you know, the idea of not getting discouraged because in science and in medicine, since you're dealing with a lot of sick people and you're trying to make discoveries that more often don't work out the way you would like them to work out, you've got to be able to keep your game up even when it looks like you're failing. What are the, the high points that we got right and wrong uh, from, your, from your perspective? With 200,000 deaths and around 7 million infections, We've got to do better than that. I tend to look ahead and say, you know, whatever it was, there's some things we did right and some things we did wrong. But right now we have 40,000 new infections as our baseline. That's an unacceptably high baseline, Steph. And that's particularly relevant because as we go into the fall and the winter season, when you're dealing with a respiratory born virus, it is always better to be outdoors versus indoors. But when the weather changes, we're going to be spending more time indoors, which is going to make it much more problematic to prevent the spread and the acquisition of a respiratory born virus. Right now, the simple public health measures, you wear a mask, you keep a physical distance, you avoid crowds, and you do things in outdoors more than indoors and wash your hands as often as you can. You wanna go into the fall and the winter in the best possible position. You don't wanna go in where you have 40,000 cases a day as the community spread level. You want the community spread level to be very low so that you could deal with little surges. You want to go in with your best game as you go into the winter. You know, we've been talking about basketball and allergies. You want to go with your starting five, your starting six and seven, all in really good shape, not with bad ankles and bad shoulders and, and bad knees. You want everybody playing at top speed. So following up on that, uh, I know a lot of younger people probably watch this and ask the question. They feel young, they feel strong, they feel you know viable to take on anything. That's kind of the uh, invincibility mindset of, of a lot of uh, I mean, young people. What would you say to them in terms of where we are now and what is necessary to get back to quote unquote normalcy? How long will that mindset need to be in place? And just how would you curb the uncertainty and the, and the, the still like persistent fear of the unknown of how long you know COVID will be in our lives as it is today? 
Young, healthy people like yourselves, when you get infected, it is unlikely that you would have a serious consequence because the overwhelming majority of the young people do very well, particularly if you don't have an underlying condition. After you've been cooped up because we've had essentially closed down so many things in society to say, hey, wait a minute, if I get infected, the chances are I'm not even going to have any symptoms. So what do I care about listening to these public health messages? I want to have a good time. I want to go to a bar. I like crowded bars. I want to meet people. I want to congregate. Even though you get no symptoms when you get infected. The fact is that you are inadvertently and innocently propagating the outbreak. Because by getting infected yourself, the chances are that you're going to infect someone else who will then infect someone else, someone's father or mother, someone's wife who's on chemotherapy for breast cancer. That could be an immunodeficient child that when they get infected, unlike you, they may have a really serious problem. For now, you're part of a society that's depending on you to not propagate the outbreak. You want to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. By the end of this year, the beginning of 2021, we'll have a vaccine that we can start distributing it first to the very vulnerable people, the healthcare providers, and then within a period of several months, virtually anybody who wants it. Once you get to that, then you will have a really good handle on the outbreak. So if you combine a good vaccine with adherence to public health measures, we can put this behind us. It may take well into 2021 towards the middle to end of the year, but gradually you're going to be able to do more things that feel like normal as opposed to the constraints we have now. The research and the investment in developing a vaccine as fast as possible is just kind of starting. What have you learned over these last six months in terms of that process to maybe ease, you know, the majority of people's concern about the how uh, accelerated that process has been, how it's going to be distributed, and just an expectation of, you know, the vaccine as a whole, how it would get us over the hump to looking at, you know, where the light is at the end of the tunnel.